Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look into Azure DevOps and open source projects. Within this, we will discuss about public versus private projects, supported services, and a practical example with .NET Core CLI. My name is Sushan Sutish, and I'm your trainer for this AZ400 Azure DevOps Engineer Certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So let's understand what is Azure DevOps and open source projects. Azure DevOps offers a suite of DevOps capabilities to developers, including source control, agile planning, build, release, test, and more. But to use Azure DevOps feature require the user to first log in using a Microsoft or GitHub account. This, however, blocks a lot of interesting scenarios when you would want to share your code and artifacts publicly or simply providing a wiki library or build status page for unauthenticated users. Let us discuss what is public versus private projects. Projects in Azure DevOps provide a repository for source code and a place for a group of developers and teams to plan, track progress, and collaborate on building software solutions. One or more projects can be defined within our organization in Azure DevOps. Users that aren't signed into the service have read-only access to the public project on Azure DevOps. And private projects, on the other hand, require users to be granted access to the project and signed in to access the services. Now let us look into the supported services. Non-members of a public project will have a read-only access to a limited set of services. Specifically, browse the code base, download code, view commits, branches, and pull requests. You can only view and filter work items, view a project page or dashboard, view the project wiki, and perform semantic search of the code or work items. And the last is, and now let us look into a practical example with .NET Core CLI. Supporting open source development is one of the most compelling scenarios for public projects. A good example is the .NET Core CLI. Their source is hosted on GitHub and they use Azure DevOps for their CI builds. However, if you click on the build badges in the readme, unless you were one of the maintainers of the project, you will not be able to see the build results. Since this is an open source project, everybody should be able to view the full result so they can see why a build failed and maybe even send a pull request to help fix it. Thanks to public project capabilities, the team will be able to enable just that experience and everyone in the community will have access to the same build results regardless of if they are a maintainer on the project or not. Now let us look into some of the questions you might ask. How do you qualify for the free tier of Azure Pipeline for public projects? Microsoft will automatically apply the free tier limits for public project if you meet both of these conditions. The conditions are your pipeline, if your pipeline is part of an Azure Pipeline's public project, or your pipeline builds a public repository for GitHub or from the same public projects in your Azure DevOps organization. Second question is, are there limits on who can use Azure pipelines? You can have as many users as you want when you are using Azure pipelines. There is no per user charge for using Azure pipelines. And users with both basic and stakeholder access can author as many builds and releases as they want. Third question is, are there any limits on the number of builds and release pipelines that I can create? No, you can create hundreds or even thousands of definitions for no charge. You can register any number of self-hosted agents for no charge. Fourth question is, as a Visual Studio Enterprise subscriber, do I get additional parallel jobs for TFS and Azure pipelines? Yes. 
Visual Studio Enterprise subscribers get one parallel job in Team Foundation Server 2017 or later and one self-hosted parallel job in each Azure DevOps service organization where they are a member. Another question is, what about the option to pay for hosted agents by the minute? Some of Microsoft's earlier customers are still on per minute plan for the hosted agents. In this plan, you pay $0.05 per minute for first 20 hours after the free tier and $0.01 per minute after 20 hours. Because of the following limitations in this plan, you, you might want to consider moving to the parallel job model. That concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we are going to look into Azure Pipeline's YAML versus Visual Designer. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.